Hey everyone, it's George Kuros, another episode of the Innovators Mindset podcast. And today I actually did a podcast um, with three educators from Tyler ISD in Tyler, Texas. And uh, the reason I actually did this podcast with them is I connected with them. Um, I, I did a keynote in Tyler, Texas, uh, just this past summer in 2021. It's, all the years are blur, it seems, right now. And uh, Melissa Blanc, she is one of the educators in the podcast. While I was speaking, uh, I encourage people to tweet, to connect. And she said, like, hey, let's do a book chat. And what was kind of neat is uh, they started this book chat that literally during my keynote, uh, not that they were so bored of my keynote, they started talking about the book, but they decided to start that initiative, uh, you know, because of a result of my keynote. And then they, you know, basically started this chat on Twitter and started connecting. And so I want to talk to Melissa about that experience. And uh, last second, Melissa reached out to me and she said, hey, I'd love you'd be great if you could eventually have these two on the podcast as well. I'm like, we'll invite them on today. So uh, we recorded with uh, Melissa, Tori, and Jenny. We talked about that process. And one of the things I appreciated about the conversation was when I was talking to them and I was having these conversations, we talked about some of their takeaways from the book, takeaways from the chat, but then they share solutions they created, not solutions I gave them in the book. And I think that's kind of the whole premise of the, the notion of the innovator's mindset. When I, when I do this podcast, what I'm hoping is that I can share some practical ideas, some inspiration, some stories that connect with you, which is the same hope that I have when I you know write my books, write my blog. But at the end of the day, I don't believe I can give anyone a carbon copy solution that will work perfectly uh, for their classroom, for their school, for the district. What I share with people is that I am here to connect you and maybe share some ideas. But ultimately, my belief is that you create the solutions, that you create this. And so talking to them um, in this, just hearing some of the solutions they're having and connecting. But I also really appreciated the opportunity that we had to like kind of just talk and hear how they appreciate one another. And this is something I've really been focusing on in my work is how do we covet the people across the hallway, not just the people across the world, because I think we we don't do enough of the former and too much of the latter. So I, I really appreciate this conversation, hearing some practical strategies. I stumped them on, you know, what what they're going to do, like what advice they give people to going into a break, which is like kind of telling that we are really good at working, but we struggle when we think about taking time off. Uh, it's interesting some of their responses to that. But I love this podcast. I love connecting with these three educators, uh, not just today, but I've connected with them through social media kind of learning from them through this process of uh, their takeaways. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for taking the time to listen. George Crows from a, a hotel room in uh, Dallas, Texas. Uh, that's why the audio is a little bit off, not as good as it usually is. But uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kuros with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I actually have three educators with me today. This was supposed to be just myself and Melissa. And Melissa, I connected with in Tyler ISD. I had the privilege of speaking to your entire school district. Um, this past summer, it was absolutely wonderful uh, to connect with you all. It, it was great. And then uh, Melissa actually uh, started right away, like literally within hours of my keynote, uh, kind of pushing, uh, um, having a uh, innovative mindset book club. I know, I'm, I'm sure that you weren't the only one. I know that there's probably several of your team uh, working with you. And so I've, been, Melissa and I have been connecting over Twitter, been watching this amazing learning that's happening in your district. And so uh, Melissa and I were going to talk today and she said, hey, I, I think it's really uh, important to bring, uh, you know, a couple other people here today. So last second, Tori and Jenny joined and it's, I'm, uh, and Melissa asked me, is it okay? I'm like, yeah, of course, I, you know. This is this would be great. So I am like really pumped to sit with you all. Now it is we're recording this on the afternoon. So if you see if, if you're if you're watching this on YouTube and you're seeing their lights turn out, you know that this is legit educators because <laughs> got to save money. You got to have the motion sensors. So you're going to see like that little the the teacher dance of lights coming out <laughs> at some point where you got to move around to get that like arm waving up and so um yeah so th thanks for thanks thanks for thanks for being here um all, all of you because i know you're you're 
you're busy all day with kids. You can hear some of them in the background still. Um, your day's ended, and then you're taking extra time to uh, be a part of this podcast. So first of all, thanks for for doing that because I know like like you, you know teachers don't really have anything to do. They're not busy at all or anything, right? So appreciate that. But Melissa, I'm gonna actually just start with you um, and just kind of just tell a little bit about who you are. Um, but, but also just kind of like how we connected and, you know, some of the stuff and, and then, and even maybe share why, why you board, invited ter- uh, Tori and Jenny today. Okay. Um, so George was, you were a speaker at our convocation yeah. this year and, um, you had invited people at the very beginning of convocation, like, Hey, pull your phones out. Mm-hmm. And I want you to get Twitter up and here's our hashtag. And I want you guys to be tweeting during, which was like something so different than what we're normally used to. Cause it's normally like everyone put your phones away, like pay attention to what's going on. And I was just like, Oh, this is amazing. Like there was so much energy in the room. Like everyone's connecting. People are commenting mm-hmm. on each other's comments. And, and it's like, when have we ever had an opportunity to actually like talk to each other while we're in a presentation and like build those, build that energy for the year. <clears throat> and so I was kind of like riding high on the whole, like, this is what we've been like wanting to cast for our district. Like our department, I'm a media technology specialist. Let me back up. Media technology specialist for Tyler ISD. I work for two elementary schools here or in Jones. Shout out to my Cubs and Jags. Oh, so, oh yep. you, Gotta you get their it. horn. <laughs> Um, so I'm under the bigger umbrella of our district called Teaching and Learning. And so we're huge about leveraging Twitter for a PD and connections outside of our schools. And so this was kind of like one of the biggest things that we'd been able to have so many district people on at the same time was when you had that hashtag going. And so I'm like, how in the world can I keep this energy going? And I I honestly started during the convocation. I don't know if you're aware of that. Like yeah. during your speech, I like looked up your book on Amazon, ordered it went on there and was like, Hey, everybody, I'm going to read this book. Who wants to join me? Let's get a book club going. And so people like, I think Jenny and Tori, you were both people that like commented like during convocation, like I'm in, I'm in. So I was like, this is amazing. And so I contact, I think, did I contact you, George, or did you see mine? I saw it during my presentation, which is like one of the little magic tricks that I do. Right. Cause while you're, while I show a video, uh, uh-huh. I'm actually going through the Twitter and I'm trying to learn from the group and seeing what's going on in the space. So yeah, right. I saw it right away. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Cool. So he reaches out to me and was like, so if you do this and I'm like, if like we have a hashtag already, it is a fish. We are doing this. <laughs> okay. Like I'm reading the book. I don't know if anyone's coming with me, but I think some people will, and we're going to have a great time. And so, and then I was like, Hey, why stop at our district? Let's open this mm-hmm. up to anybody. And so um, we just like put it out there and George like helped us promote it as well, because I mean, you have a way bigger platform than I do. And we've actually, had like a few people from all around the country who've been participating in our Twitter chat, which I'm like, oh my gosh, like, and George himself, you've gotten on and you've said something to us. I'm going, when in the world yeah, can you ever they, actually they, like have a book club where the, the if your name is called, please make your way. Please it's Brett Shelby on the podcast. Was that him? I'm going to put it in the, in the, like the, the subtitle. I'm going to say with special guest Brett. Yes, please yes. do. Yes, oh my god. You gosh, would make his so day. Funny. Yeah. Um, so I'm we talked thinking. about connecting, you know, we we're connecting, you know, when I was connecting with you too. That's where he's before Brett interrupted us. <laughs> typical, <laughs> typical Brett. Oh, that's so funny. Um, but I was thinking, like, our first Twitter chat, I think you mm. jumped on there. We're like, hey guys, thanks for participating, man. I'm going where else besides Twitter can you have a book club where the actual author drops in and says hi to you? I mean, it just kind of like blows my mind all yeah. that's available on Twitter. So anyways, I, I wanted Tori and Jenny to come today because they've been like my faithful two friends who like show up every single Tuesday night at 830. Like they're on there. We are talking back and forth. We have other friends who are commenting throughout the week, which is amazing too. And I think that's another thing I love. It's like the conversation's never really over on Twitter. Mm-hmm. So even if they can't make it, they're in a different time zone or they're, it's just not a good night for them. Like we have a few other friends who are also like commenting and posting throughout the week, but they've been my like two most faithful buddies to actually be on there. We're commenting to each other. They're asking me about my goals, how they're going. I'm asking them. And like, there's real have been like really impactful um, accountability and um, collaboration between the three of us about where we're wanting to go with the information we're getting from your book. So, you know, you know, what's like really interesting is like, I so appreciate, like, I was really honored to be there. That was actually an event that was 
several years in the making because I was supposed to be there the year prior for, you know, COVID and all that stuff. You know, like, I don't know if you heard of that COVID thing, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, kinda, you know, kind of interrupted I think I've heard some, of it. some things. Um, but what, what's really neat about that process is, I, I will be honest with you, I get a lot of credit for getting, you know, people connected and stuff like this. And I, I don't, I don't, I think what all I want to do is get people to connect with them. Like, I, I love that people connect all over the world, but I think one of the powerful things I watch through that process and I try to encourage is people connecting in their own district. Because I think a lot of times in our own school districts, we have amazing things, but then we don't use that technology to kind of see what's happening, you know, basically maybe across the road, you know, maybe across town and kind of need to see. And so I, I like the idea of like kind of going in there, getting people excited and then kind of walking away. And then they start to realize how amazing everyone else is in their district. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that to me is one of the things that's really powerful. It's not about like, it's not about my ideas that I'm sharing there. It's about getting people some access to one another and then just getting them to appreciate one another. So, which is one of the reasons I love that you invited uh, Tori and Jenny today. So I'm Jenny, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, and so you, Jenny, you teach pre-K and you just, and we just had a podcast. This is your second year so far, correct? Yes, that's correct. So, so what's, what's some of the, like, some of the things like through that chat, through this process, through connecting with one another, what's some of the takeaways that you've had so far? Um, one of the things that we talked about on the Twitter book club was, um, asking our students for feedback on how we can improve the classroom. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that Tori says is um, it's their classroom. We're just privileged to teach in it. Right. And I love I love that quote from Tori. It's hers. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I she had asked her fourth graders and posted a picture of their feedback on how they she can improve instruction and how she can improve the experience for them. And I was like, you know what? I'd be really interested to find out what four year olds think. Right. So I asked my four year olds, how can I make the classroom better for you? And their responses were, I mean, adorable because they're four. It was like, give me more hugs and oh, help us with done. things. And yeah, of course, that's the easiest. But I mean, right. their needs are so simple at that age. But it's it was so impactful for them for me to ask because in their little brains, they don't even think like, why do you need my input? Mm -hmm. They were just thinking, what can you like, what can I do to help? you because right. they're oh they're all they mm -hmm. only hear you, you need to listen you need to share you need to clean up your toys so when i ask them how can i make class better they're like i need to share i need to listen i need to do this so it's all so you know self-focused which is very typical for four-year-olds but and i just kept having to correct them no 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 what can <laughs> i do to help right. you what can i do so for them to have that shift it was this really amazing little you could see the transformation on their faces. They're like, Oh, you, what can you do? Oh, well then how about you can do this and this and, but, but their wants were so simple. You know, it was just, it was great. That was my favorite thing so and, far. And one of the things that I really appreciate that about that, and then I'll, I'll get Tori to kind of share a little bit more about this process. I think that, oh, Tori's going to do the teacher dance. Dance break. Dance break. <laughs> so do that. I should, I should actually have a little music going here. I know. Yeah. Right here. Every time. There, there. So I got a little, <laughs> little music every time. I was just going to play it. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. So when you're, you're doing this, because I think um, early on in my career, um, I would do like student surveys asking for feedback, right? But I would do it at the end of the year. So I'm like, hey, sorry, this year sucked for you. But next year for the new kids, right? Like, and I, so I was kind of saying like, hey, you know, it's probably important that I actually get some of this feedback right now, right? And so I can help these kids earlier and say like, hey, like, how can I redirect? Because I think, you know, we do that a lot of times in education. Not only, you know, teachers do that with students, but, you know, I think, let's be honest, admin does that sometimes with teachers, right? Um, they, they'll ask advice at the end of the year when, you know, five of their staff have quit because they hated the year, right? And so like, it doesn't really help that those, those five people. So I, I love, I think for me, you can tell something has made an impact when um, you can give me a direct correlation to like, hey, I started doing this and this is how it benefited kids, right? Because I think a lot of times when we talk about learning, it's a lot about like, hey, what what's good for the adults? Not necessarily like, hey, how does this actually trickle down into our classrooms? How does this actually connect? I'm not saying we shouldn't do things that are good for the adults, just like, taking care of the adults, taking care of the kids. But like, how does this directly connect to kids? And I love that. So Tori, now you, you teach, like I have you, you teach fourth grade. That's actually the, the 
first grade that I started teaching. So I have like a very special place in my heart for that. Uh, that was my first full year. So like what's some of the connections that you've made so far um, through this process and kind of connecting with one another? Are you and Jenny in the same school or are you? We are, yes, different schools? yes. Okay, so that's yeah. great. I mean, I'd actually just pop in, right? I can get a fifth window going and everything here. So, so what's some of the what's some <laughs> you stuff would that you like take? die of excitement. Well, yeah, yeah, you just send them an email saying, tell them pop in, that'd be great. You don't go into you gotta answer the question story first before it, but somebody can message them to connect. Yeah, Jenny, oh. you should you should email them and be like, yeah. Yeah. Just okay. say just story, easy Tell thing. Say like, hey, can you come down? Because my, my lights are broke. They keep turning <laughs> off. Yeah, just just text him and say, Hey, come come to room 35. You I'm texting him sure. right now. Sure. He sure. will die. Um, so yeah, for me, it's been, you know, I think that was actually, um, I got that idea of asking for feedback. I think Melissa had actually posted something about it. And so I took it from her. And then like mm. the very next day, I was like, I have to do this. And so it was very informative. <laughs> and, and, you know, fourth grade is a right. lot different than pre-K. They're going right. to, and I even said, you don't have to put your name on this. And they were like, oh, okay, bet. And so I got a lot of good most of them was very it was very kind and polite and then there was there was one that said i think you talk too much mm -hmm. and i was like mm, oof and so and i it would have been so easy for me to have been like okay rude you know and, but so we from there we ended up going to a self-paced blended learning model and so i'm like i'm not I'm talking as much anymore and so I did a lot of research into that. And that's one thing that Melissa and Jenny have been giving a, me a lot of good feedback on because that's been my goal this year. And so every time we have this book chat, you know, they're always asking me, how's it going? How's your goal? Is there anything that I can do to help? And so it's been, they've been so helpful in this, you know, kind of risky journey that I've been taking. And they've been giving me so many, so much great feedback and ideas and so it's just been, and it's, you know, you talked about connecting with people outside the district, connecting with people inside of this district, but then also connecting with people inside of your school that you usually wouldn't, like I teach fourth grade and Jenny is a friend, but we don't really ever talk about what's going on in our classroom. And so getting to be able to, to get her feedback as well from someone who is in our school has been super mm -hmm. helpful as well. Yeah, and that's like, that's one of my, that's always, I, I talk about this quite a bit, one of my biggest pet peeves in education is how we like just totally covet people from other schools, from other districts, from around the world. And then we kind of downplay our own staff. And I think that to me has always been something that I've struggled with. And I'm sure, you know, all of us, and I, I think not just all of us in the space right now, but, you know, when I say all of us, I'm talking about education, have maybe felt that where we felt like discounted by some of our own staff. we felt not appreciated because it kind of, you know, we, we often treat, treat strangers better than we treat people that we know really well, right? And I think that, that to me is something that I hope we can really kind of focus on because really no education kind of gets a negative light in some media circles uh, in a space, but it doesn't really help when we don't, when we see people every day and we don't celebrate them or, you know, talk about their accomplishments and, you know, kind of have those, those opportunities there too. Um, so can I ask, and anyone can answer this, um, since that day this year, um, I know this is kind of the, one, like one of the things that I'm hearing, and I don't know if this is true um, with you all, because I haven't asked you this until now, but uh, a lot of people thought this year would be much easier than last year. And in many ways, people say that it's actually been harder. This, and so you're all agreeing <laughs> Um, was, uh, I feel bad because like it's like is that so I'm accurate in what that's how you're feeling there too so yeah. like so how how are you dealing with that like how like what how do you because I think part of it too is like it's great that you're taking this time to learn on your own uh, you know connecting these spaces after school but obviously people are overwhelmed and exhausted so like I would love to hear you know for the people out there um, you know I, like I, I, I don't know anybody. I really have not met one educator in my travels that said this year is actually easier. Like everyone says it's harder. So like how are you how are you dealing with that and like what what like what advice could you give to people um, kind of going through some of the things that you're going through right now? <laughs> there's, there's, there's no way that everyone's like, no. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think for me it's you know, we, we started off this year so just excited and so glad that we were back in person. Mm -hmm. 
I think the most difficult part for me, and I'm just speaking for myself, is how much our kids have lost from being at home and because of COVID and not just educationally, but also personally and in their personal lives. And that's taken a toll. Um, But the gaps, I think for me, the hardest part are the gaps that we are facing right now, because, you know, you have, you know, kids, my fourth graders, the last time that they had a normal school year was first grade. I mean, so we're not only dealing with teaching them fourth grade material when, you know, we do have those gaps, but also teaching them how to do school again. Mm -hmm. You know, we were there last year, we were in person, but we were doing everything in pods and just last year was different. And so I think for me, it's just figuring out ways to close those gaps that our kids are experiencing, and but also making sure that we are socially giving them everything they need you know so we've i've started doing a mental health check-in and so they every morning they and then this is something that we've also shared in the book chat and jenny's taken to her class which it looks different in pre-k but doing a mental health check-in and seeing where they're at and you know a lot of kids are struggling and when you pull them aside to talk to them it's you know deaths in the family and or or parents who are sick, siblings who are sick. So that's been a huge priority of mine is not just closing those educational gaps, but making sure that my students are emotionally okay. So I got—I just got to say this story, and this is really, I really appreciate what you just shared because I think what I really appreciate what you shared is that you're, you're talking about the reality of the situation, right? That there's like this, there's these gaps to what's happening socially, academically, things like that. But then you're like, and so here is something that I've done as a solution to kind of try to help um, kind of move forward. Because I think a lot of times it's really easy to get caught up. Like this is not as good. Kids are struggling with this. Kids are struggling with this. And then that's where the the conversation ends, right? And I've seen that, you know, talking about this. And I think a lot of people, like if you're like looking for solutions, people are like, oh, you just... You know, focusing on false positivity, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, we're addressing the situation to find a way forward, right? And so, like, the, the analogy that I give is, um, you know, if you're in a burning house and you say, oh, it's really warm in here, that is kind of like, you know, kind of a false reality. <laughs> but if, you're, if your house is burning down and you say, like, hey, the house is burning down, we have to, like, put this out somehow. we got to, like, figure this out. Like, that's what we kind of should be doing is trying to figure out how to like move forward and, and connect and, you know, um, just, I, I've really been thinking, I, I saw, I, I heard someone say this, I can't remember where I heard it from. It's like, it's not necessarily um, COVID that's been the issue as much as the reaction to it and some of the barriers that it put on. And I don't like, I, I, I've thought about it. I don't know necessarily how I feel, right? Like, obviously this is a worldwide pandemic, you know, a lot of the, like I, when I say, Hey, I'm hearing this from educators in Texas, uh, I'm also hearing from educators in Canada where I live, you know, Australia, I was talking to a group yesterday, but I think how we react to stuff does matter because if it's always, if the issue is, if we always see it as something out of our control, then we have no opportunity to like do anything to move forward. Right. Then it's always someone else's option to fix it for us. And I've always struggled with that. So Melissa or Jenny, if you got, you know, like, obviously we know there's a, the issues. What are some of the things that you're doing to kind of help, with your students, I'd love to, you know, and, and like, I, I, I will also, I know I'm talking a little too much. I'll probably get that feedback from when you're grade four kids. I think <laughs> the emotional, the mental check-ins, one of the things I thought about is like, I hope, I hope adults are doing that with, with the staff too. Right. Like not like, it's not like just the kids who struggle, right. Like it's all of us. So yeah. um, Mel- Melissa and Jenny, anything that you're trying, you know, kind of dealing with some of the complexities of this year. Well, I know, you know, with four-year-olds, they're so young um, and we have to think that they were two, two and a half when the shutdown happened. So all they know is staying at home or just pandemic. That's all they know. Mm -hmm. So their social skills are, um, you know, they're lower and we have, we have just, we've moved to, um, changing just some of our regular routines to just being social and emotional driven. Um, in previous, you know, last year and the year before it was different, but we had less kids. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so in like for our morning circle time, circle time is a big deal in early childhood. Um, and it's typically just a greeting and uh, it's a couple songs and we would read a book. But this year it's very social driven and we are doing conscious discipline as a district. The district has um, given us some really good training in conscious discipline practices. And we're doing I love you rituals. Um, we're singing songs to create community. Um we have role playing where we talk about a situation and then how do we handle that situation and we talk through it and they practice. Um, and we just, we do a lot of social skills training. It's less academic fueled at this mm-hmm. point in the year. Yeah. And the, the, the connection, I think a lot of people will say like, oh, when you like talk relationships and you talk like social emotional, it's like, you know, it's like kind of fluff. Right, like that's kind of fluffy stuff, right? And the reality of it is, is that you build those relationships so you can move forward, so that you can grow. Because, like we you know, talk about that, you know, that lack of trust doesn't actually help to fuel these things, right? It, it does. So I appreciate that. Can I, can I just ask you to tell me a little? I, I've never heard of conscious discipline. I don't know what that is. So can you like explain that a little bit? What what that means, what, or what that is in practice? Sure. So it's um, it's a social emotional kind of curriculum. Mm -hmm. Um, Dr. Becky Bailey is the author of the conscious discipline practice. Basically there's, there's like textbooks that go along with it. And um, it's just all about creating connections with your students and then connections that the students build with each other. Um, So like, and I love you ritual. um, We do those a lot. And it's just something where you can get down with the child. And in my class, we're practicing doing it with friends together so that they can build the connections with each other. And they just sing a little song and they do like gentle, gentle touches. I know it's pre-K. It sounds kind of weird for like a fourth grader or high school to do this, but it's, uh, you know, gentle touches. And then like, hugging and high fives and things like that so that they're learning how to interact with others right. in their space. Yeah. I, I appreciate that because you know, that's uh, something that's really important to me as a, not just as an educator, but as a dad. So I love that you're sharing that. Uh, Melissa, I know that you've been doing some incredible work this year. So like, what are some of the things that you're doing to kind of deal with some of the adversity of the year? Right. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to focus a little more, bit more on like edu- educator for ourselves um, how where like how I've been feeling like I can make it, you know, a positive year, mm-hmm. um, is I feel like there's a lot to get bogged down in. Um, and there's a lot that can be, we can be discouraged about, right. Um, like Tori was speaking about the, the huge gaps and like everyone's working as hard as they can to fill those gaps. But I think we have to be really conscious as educators to make sure not to like lose our spark and like our passion for the things that we are excited about and like keeping mm-hmm. something in our forefront that like we're, like this book club like we're sharing like our goals and like we're staying focused on like forward motion and the things that we're mm-hmm. passionate about and it just kind of helps to like recenter everything else and not let yourself get off and like just all of the hard things because like those are always there and they're mm-hmm. going to continue to be there for a while um but I think the important thing is to like maintain our excitement and our passion for like what we're doing in education and making sure that we're like, we're keeping a forward momentum. Um, like Tori, you're ch- like, she's doing, like she had this goal. She wanted to go to self-directed learning and instead of getting bogged down on all of the, you know, like, well, there's so many gaps. What am I going to do? Like, she is like, I'm going to make this work for my kids. And like, it's going to make a huge difference. And like, we're just going to keep going for it. Dance party. Dance party. Where's party. George? <laughs> um, and so like for me, it's it's been this book club, like this has been a huge thing that's taking me through. It's like, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in this. Like I'm mm-hmm. not alone in like wanting to pursue innovation and creative learning. Like I have these other people in my district, even outside of my district that are like on the same train. And it just like makes me feel really encouraged as an educator to know I can share some expertise. Like I'm able to share some things that they've taken to their classroom. And it's very fulfilling to be able to keep that as something that I'm doing regularly because it just makes me feel, it, it kind of fills that like positive cup so mm-hmm. that you can continue to maintain the things that are difficult, you know? You know, so like, I, I, again, I can't remember who said this, but it's really kind of that focus on on growth um, can get you through some really challenging times. I actually remember um, when my dad, 
passed away, I was uh, about probably about eight, nine days after I went to speak. And uh, I changed a lot of what I was talking about to kind of talk about some of the impact that my father's passing had um, during that time. And I remember like bawling profusely in front of a group, uh, kind of dealing with that. And, like, you know, like if I felt, you know, if I'm going to be able to do this in front of a group of people, I'm really glad that it's a group of teachers. Like you talk about the most supportive people you can actually meet. And so even though they're all strangers, I know, you know, by default, they're going to be supportive of that. And I felt that I was act, I weirdly, I was just thinking about this today when, I don't know, maybe that's why I, I kind of connected it to what you're saying is that really kind of trying to do things to help me grow, help me deal with some of that. And it was dealing with some of the, the trauma of, of, you know, losing my father and uh, doing that. But I think, you know, growth is part of what gets us through things because if you feel stagnant when there's negativity happening, then it can actually kind of make you feel like you're not just not just having a tough time, but you're almost kind of going backwards through this right. process. So it's like easy to get sucked into the negativity unless you're like totally. having forward momentum going. Totally, totally. And I, I think that to me is, you know, something that may, and maybe I mean, I always feel sometimes that maybe I'm doing it blindly, like, like, am I just doing this to like, you know, I feel um, some of the mental health struggles, I, I like exercise, I'm like, hey, it's a good way for me to avoid it. And I don't know, is this avoid it? So it's actually like a helpful practice, right? Like, you're gonna catch up to me at some point. So I always find, you know, and I'm not obviously not a psychologist, but I feel like getting, you know, exercising, things like that have helped me kind of deal with some adversity and uh, to better kind of develop a resiliency where I can, you know, deal with some of the negative things. Um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask each of you kind of like you've all mentioned this connection that you've had through doing this book club. Um, what has been, and I'll, I'll actually, I'll start with, uh, I'll start with Jenny. What's been like one takeaway that you've had so far? Like what's been one big thing? that you, you feel maybe has made an impact in your classroom or an impact uh, with your colleagues, maybe from the book, from the chat, like what, what's something that has stuck out to you? Um, you got nothing. It was like, okay. Ooh, I'm going to have to think about it. I'm going to have to think about it. Well, Is that well, okay? Well, yeah, we can do phone a friend. Tori, Tori, you got okay. one? <laughs> Melissa, you got one? Yes. Okay, Melissa, you go we'll go Tori, you seem like you were like ready to go. No, I was, um, you know, looking back. And so one quote that was brought up was, you know, and this is from Innovators Mindset. Engagement is a good thing, but we must also empower students and equip them with the skills to learn how to be self-directed and guide their own learning. And that's something that has really stuck with me this year, how to really empower my students. And, you know, yes, it's been a hard year, but also it's been very, I feel like, Melissa was saying is I have that spark and just willing to empower students and wanting to just keep push, pushing forward. And that was a quote that really got me thinking about how am I teaching and how can I change it to where I'm not just engaging my my learners, but I'm also empowering them to be in charge of their own learning. Yeah, and it, like you gave such a great example of, you know, asking students for feedback and talk about empowered practice, right, where they feel that the direction of the classroom and, you know, how you connect with them is based on their input. Like that's, that's a pretty powerful way to, you know, really tap into voice. Um, Melissa, you got something so far? Yes. So um, I think like one of the biggest things for all of us was the conversation that we had about um, feedback. And because I know like, but like I, I talked about how I had done that with my students in my GT classroom. And then they were like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Like I'm taking, like they both took it back to their kids. And then I just kind of like had a time of reflection of thinking like, how am I still implementing that as a media technology specialist? I'm not teaching a class of students all day, every day to get feedback, but like, how am I receiving feedback from my teachers? How am I receiving feedback from my students? Because I still do work with students in the school. It's just not in the same zone as I used to when I was a classroom teacher. And so um, like one of my goals I've kind of talked through with them is like making sure that I am eliciting that feedback. And so um, I actually just formed a literacy committee at one of my schools because they haven't had one. And we had our first meeting yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I also told them is I wanted to extend that beyond just teachers and like maybe have like a student literacy committee where they're giving feedback on like what would get you excited about reading or 
um, you know, what kind of initiatives do you want to see happening at our school? And so I actually talked to the teachers about that yesterday and they said, hey, instead of having just like a, you know, committee of, of just a few students, like how about making a Google form and posting it out on our Clever portal and then like on the news, because I actually started a newscast last year at the school. On the news, you could promo it to all the kids and be like, hey, we want to get your feedback about reading at the school. Like everyone go on Clever today and fill out the survey. So you're getting like 700 responses and like disaggregating that and seeing like what's like what kind of trends are showing up like what's going to get the kids excited about reading and so it was just it's just neat because that's come out of the specific conversations that i've had with them at the book club of just reading your book and and like getting taught by you but then also like brainstorming with these people that i work in the district with to take that to my schools and like really make a difference with my teachers and my students you know, as I'm listening to um, all of your responses to questions and talk about some of the practices, I think one of the, so it's interesting because we're talking about the connections to the book and your connections through the chat, but like the strategies that you are talking about are not like, hey, this is a thing that I told you to do in Innovator's Mindset and then you carbon copied and did it. Right. They're either variations or totally different things that I, you know, didn't even mention. And what I love about that is that's basically the premise of the innovator's mindset is you actually have to know your community. You have to know who you're, you're the people you work with. What are the things that you need in your context? Right. Cause like somebody said this to me and I thought it was one of the best compliments I got. They said, your, your books are pandemic proof, right? Like they weren't written in 2020. They were written in like, you know, innovative mindset was 2015. Right. But I think it's more applicable than ever because it's like talking about how do you deal with adversity? How do you deal with change? Mm -hmm. Like what, how do you actually, you know, find possibilities through that? And so each one of you is actually talking about solutions that you have created, not solutions. I, I, I think what I always say is I'm trying to give you ideas, but you create the solutions, right? Right. Like that, that's, and I, I love that that's being modeled. Uh, Jenny, what do you got? All right. So one of my favorite quotes that we we always talk about a quote from the book in book club. It's kind of how we kick things off. Um, one of my favorites was um, change is something we talk about and expect from others, not necessarily ourselves. That one. Um, I think did you tweet Mal- that, Jenny? Did you? Tweet I sure that? did. Yeah, because <laughs> you liked it. I saw that tweet. Yeah. Because I felt personally attacked and was <laughs> called me out too. She remembers. Yes. That, that, yeah. You sure did. Yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is bad. Um, but I think that the book club has really helped us thinking about other, uh, Brett Shelby just walked in. What's up, Brett hey. Shelby? <laughs> No, keep, you keep going, keep going, and then and then I'll try to get Brett on. Oh, no, I'm just ch- stopping by. <laughs> no, no, tell, him to, tell him to stay. Tell him to stay. Yeah, no, he, like, they, you, George you, says you could stay. Yeah, you. I, 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 I so. Yeah, just, well, just finish, can finish I unplug? Yeah. You can take okay. Your okay. Finish, 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 and then we'll. Okay, we'll, we'll so. Um, I just think that sharing in the book club has created just a way that we can really keep ourselves accountable um, and we can create that change ourselves uh, like you've talked about and some of the things that we've implemented in our classrooms. And I think that it's just going to keep it, keep me thinking for sure as a newer teacher is going to keep me thinking about how can we, how can we meet the needs of our students where they are right now? How can we, um, you know, fix this problem. How can, and it's just a constant state of reflection and revising what you're doing in your classroom that I just have really appreciated in this. Well, you know, so do you know what, like one of the things that I really try to do um, and I think is, is really important in practice is when I get frustrated with other adults and I get frustrated with like, I'm like, oh, this person is like just so far behind. I, I stop and say, okay, when was I like that? When was I that? And I can identify those things. And I think that's a really important aspect because I think a lot of times uh, we compare people to the, our viewpoints today. So when we talk about some of that stuff, um, when we when we connect that way, I think a lot of times when we when we do this, we point to other people and, and how they're the issue, how they're kind of the, the problem uh, with some of the stuff that we do. Not necessarily about how um when were we when were we the issue that's oh my gosh. That's so nice. sorry listen brett brett came in there, came in there to Lie. make sure he came in there to make sure the, the lights were on can you tori since he came in your classes can you give him the mic for a second i just want to he's gone he left he ran he's gone okay that's fine 
Yeah, so I think that to me is like a lot of times when I write, I don't point fingers at other people. I point fingers at myself, but maybe at myself in 2015, maybe at myself in 2018. Because I think it's really easy to like, like why aren't you like thinking the way I'm thinking today? And I'm like, why aren't you thinking that way, you know, five years ago when other people were thinking this, right? And so kind of that, that you know, I, I appreciate, Jenny, your vulnerability for sharing that because I think a lot of times – we're like, oh, why aren't you doing this? I'm like, well, why weren't you doing it three years ago? Like, why why are you so far behind, you know, compared to, like, this person who was doing it 10 years ago? And that we just kind of get at different places at different times. And I think we need to celebrate that movement forward instead of, like, saying, why are you not to the place where I am right now, right? You no, know, understanding you are behind other people. You're behind other, I'm, everyone, all of us are behind other people right now in some aspects of our our philosophy. So I'm going to, I'm going to, we're, we're kind of winding down here. I want to just kind of go um, really short advice. Um, what would you give uh, advice as people are going into the end of the calendar year? Um, and a lot of people are about to get into a break. Uh, people all over the world listen to this podcast. So uh, in some countries, they're actually going into the end of the school year. So, but everyone's going to be getting a break, you know, around the end of December. What is like one piece of advice you give them go, not to go teaching, but going into the break. So it's like an interesting, that's a good question, George. <laughs> okay, so, so you're saying, got. let me clarify. You're saying what advice well, about you, going into you know, a break? Not, not going into teaching. Yeah, like, you know, coming up on a break. Like, there, we're co- like everyone's coming up on, I know that you have, we've already done, Canada's way ahead of the U.S. We already did Thanksgiving. So, like, we're like a couple months ahead of you for Thanksgiving, <laughs> right? So we had that break already. But like, you know, the December break, what like what advice did you give the people like not about teaching, but going into a break coming up? What would you tell them? to? Do? What would you share? What are you doing? You know, as you, you're looking forward to your break. Do you not take breaks in Texas? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we're about to. So, OK, I'm going to give you I'm going to tell I'm going to say something I got right now. This is like one of the problems with education right here is that <laughs> you can focus on everything while you're working. But then I ask you about taking a break and you're like, oh, I don't even think about that. And I'm like, what? We need to like, we got to take care of ourselves somewhere. Take a break. Like, yeah. Okay, so, so my advice is it, just the same advice that I just gave about education. Like, do you have something that you're passionate about that you're going to like expend some of your like break energy on you know like how are you going to sharpen your saw all my jack friends are like i know y'all are super (laughs) quick on that um the seven habits but like are you are you going to just like lay around and like veg out or i mean which i'll see obviously like do some of that but like are Mm. you going to do something that is going to fulfill you and and like are you going to find that passionate spark that you have for something that is not maybe education um because i think that's really important to keep ourselves um like fresh in all areas, not just in our teaching career, but in our personal life as well. So that would be we're, my advice. We're, find we're your educa- passion. Education is bad at breaks. Like this is, yeah. and we're like, we're who? I said, I can't remember. I wrote this somewhere. In no, like, in no profession do people get guilted for having holidays more than teachers, right? True. Like you don't like say, oh, doctor, like you need three weeks off. Nobody says that. Right. But teachers is like, ah, you get a, it's like, like, yeah, people are mostly exhausted. Right. Like, yeah, it's, it's not even a break. It's just kind of recuperation, you know? So I I appreciate that. Tori, Jenny, you got some advice, you know, people coming up to a break pretty soon. Yeah. I think mine would be, you know, we talk about connections with our students, but making sure that during these breaks that you are being intentional in your connections with your family and your friends and, you know, making sure that you're spending quality time with the people around you and really filling their buckets just as much and giving them as much energy as we give our students. That's, that's really good advice. I actually, I felt like Jenny felt, I felt you personally attacked me right there. <laughs> that's what I felt. Cause I think I felt I sometimes, you know, I will be on the road and then I'll come home and I'll just like not give anything to my family. And I think I try to be better at that, but we do we do that. Ah, oh, Tori, I don't know. Melissa, I don't know about you inviting Tori. That was a, that was a little spike. <laughs> I felt like that was that was like a setup. But anyways, Jenny, you got some do you got some advice there? Well, I kind of took your question as like, what should you do to make this time uh, meaningful with your students? Not what are you gonna do on your break? 
but what do you like how are you going to survive this time right. from now until the break um that's how i that's how i interpret sure. the question so uh, my advice would be just to enjoy your students and continue making connections with them try to do something that's fun with them every day even if it's just a little five minute something just try to do something fun so that you enjoy and you would just continue to build those connections and relationships with them well hey i i so appreciate i know that this was melissa had been melissa and i have been talking about this for a while um and i appreciate the like the impromptu i'm in a hotel room not in my usual space but uh tori melissa thanks for inviting tori and jenny as well as participating because it's always great to hear from the practices some of the things that you're doing and uh, I want to give a shout out to all my friends at Tyler ISD, Woo -woo. right? So I hope I hope they got the chance to listen to the brilliance in their own school district because I know that um, we benefit greatly from the people we don't take, we don't necessarily appreciate them as much as we should, and I hope they I hope they do. So, um, uh, Tori, Melissa, Jenny, thanks so much for being on. Uh, people, you'll see their their information on Twitter. Uh, linked in the description down below. So make sure you connect with them. Make sure you say hi. And Melissa, can I just ask you, how long, is the Innovative Mindset Book Study, is that still going on? Yes, we are actually are going to be discussing Chapter 8 tonight. Uh, we're oh, going cool. through January. So we do a chapter a week. So, you know. <laughs> it's a busy day for you. It's like nonstop, <laughs> right? I know. And we're going to get to connect again tonight. I'm like, what are we going to do with ourselves? But what I told is, you they were amazing. Aren't what you glad is, they came? What's the hashtag for it, by the way? Hashtag book club I am. Book club I am. Okay, so and it's open still, right? So yeah, people it's open. listen Jump to now, they can join in and connect with 8 30 so. Central Standard Time every Tuesday. I love it. Okay, so thanks so much for being on. Thanks for all you do. I hope you have uh, I hope you all have a wonderful break coming up, even though you don't seem like you know what you're gonna be doing during that time. <laughs> like listen, you need to get better <laughs> breaks, but um thanks for thanks for being here. Everyone, thanks for taking the time to listen. I, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Take care.